Welcome to session three in my All About Bees Queen Rearing video collection. In session one, I gave you an introduction to queen rearing. And in session two, I explained how to rear a small number of queens using the Miller method. This session is all about making and use of nuclei, a very important skill that every beekeeper should master. E.B. Wedmore, author of the Manual of Beekeeping wrote, there is no problem in beekeeping that can't be solved by either putting something into or taking something out of a nuke, and nukes really give problems. And I would definitely agree with him on that. So I'll cover the different types and use of a nucleus hive, the general setup, how to build a nuke up and unite them, so you have a good chance of getting in through the winter. If you are enjoying these videos, please click the like and subscribe button below and you won't miss out on any new video releases. You can support my channel by buying me a beer or donating to my PayPal page. The links are in the banner at the top of the page. I also welcome any comments or questions you may have. There is no longer a British standard for nukes. I would say a nucleus hive should have bees occupying no more than five British standard deep frames, a laying queen or queen cell, combs of stores and brood of all stages, but it is different if you are buying a nuke. I used to sell about 50 nukes a year and when I retired in 2020 I was charging £180, but you could be asked to pay up to double that amount in some parts of the UK. If you are buying a nuke, in my opinion it should, should comprise British standard deep Hoffman frames with wired comb in good condition with no excess of drone brood. Five combs, at least three with brood. You want brood of all stages, eggs, larvae and seal brood. You want adequate stores and most importantly a laying queen marked and raised in the current or the previous year. I wouldn't advise buying a nuke with a queen cell in, as there is no guarantee the queen will emerge, mate successfully and then begin laying. The colony is only viable when you have a laying queen. A nucleus is a colony in miniature, and it houses a small, sustainable colony, and that applies to whatever way it's set up. There are several designs of nucleus hives, but the most useful are similar to a national hive, but half the size, using five or three combs and a dummy. They are best with top bee space, you get no squash bees, and with a fixed solid floor. Nukes are made of wood, cedar or plywood, and more recently polyurethane nukes have become very popular. They can also be made of wax cardboard or corex, and in fact I used to sell all of my nukes in corex boxes. Most nuke hives have space for four, five or six brood frames. The five frame size provides an overall plant size capable of accepting a standard 1.5 litre plastic feeder within the roof space. The poly nukes have an inbuilt feeder built in, or you can buy top feeders for them. The ability to feed a nucleus colony is very important since by virtue of their small size, they have small reserves to bring them through a patch of poor weather. These are homemade wooden nukes with a deep roof to accommodate a jar or a rapid feeder. You want a small round entrance which is easy to defend against robin bees and wasps. You should create your nukes, needless to say, from strong disease-free colonies. You can select brood and bees from one or more colonies and put these into one nuke. You can add a newly mated queen a virgin queen, a spur queen or a ripe queen cell. Make sure that the nuke has plenty of stores, pollen and nectar, especially if it is remaining in the same apiary, as the flying bees will return to the parent colony and there will be no new forages for a while. When you are more experienced, you can make up nucleus colonies in any format you wish, but I always teach the five frame nuke recipe to begin with. It consists of two frames of brood, preferably seal brood, and the bees that were on the frames. Two frames of pollen and stores and the bees on them, which are placed on opposite outsides, and one empty frame of drawn comb. If the nuke is staying in the same apiary, which it can, then you need to shake in two frames of bees into the nuke box. 
making sure you don't shake the queen in. You do this because any flying bees will return to the original hive, leaving the young and nurse bees to care for the brood. Also, if staying in the same apiary, you shouldn't feed the nuke for 48 hours, as those flying bees that return to the original hive may well tell their sisters that stores are readily available in the nuke box next, bo next door, and as they are all from the same colony, smell-wise, there wouldn't be any guards to stop them robbing. So here we have the standard five frame nuke arrangement with pollen and stores on the outside, two frames of brood preferably sealed next to each other and an empty frame drawn column. Here you can see one nuke housed in a brood chamber with the combs at one end and a dummy board keeping it intact. A reduced entrance to protect from rubbing and loss of heat is important. You can also house two nukes in one brood chamber, as shown in these photographs. The box is divided by a piece of wood known as a division board, and there are two separate entrances. The benefit of this setup is that each nuke benefits from the warmth of the other. It is also possible to have three nukes in one brood chamber using two division boards. This requires a specially modified floorboard with three entrances, as you can see here. You must also ensure that each nuke is physically isolated from the others, otherwise they will fight and you will probably end up with just one queen heading one combined colony. Making these nukes can be fun and I used to use them years ago, but with the many types of mini mating nukes and poly nukes on the market today at an affordable price, I stopped using the wooden homemade ones a while ago. Going back to Wedmore's famous quote about nukes, there is no problem in beekeeping that can't be solved by either putting something into it or taking something out of it. Let's have a look at some of the purposes for nukes. If you are making increase or selling bees, it is usual to set up a nuke colony. It is easier when requeening to introduce the queen into a nuke first and once she is accepted, unite the nuke to the queenless colony. Queen mating is easier in nukes as there are less bees required, etc. Nukes are useful when housing a small swarm. Also, if you wish to boost a colony for the main summer nectar flow, or for example the heather, you can keep a nuke next to the main colony and then unite the two just before the move. If you have a special queen with good characteristics, for example, she could be calm and very fecund, then you can retire her to a nuke and select her eggs for a queen rearing setup. She will lay and likely live longer in a managed nuke. And you can also use a nuke in your swarm prevention and control system. See my swarm control videos. I used to take a dozen or more nuke hives headed by a current year queen through winter as a spring contingency, as it is a part of beekeeping to find a few drone laying queens in full size hives after winter. You can keep an observation nucleus hive for education purposes and as long as you manage it correctly you can take it into schools or to shows all summer. A new queen can be assessed in the nucleus hive for a full season as part of a queen rearing program. A nucleus makes a good home for a spare queen or more. Nukes are in good shape to draw foundation and will draw it evenly from corner to corner. Bee farmers will make up many nukes at the end of summer and house them in poly nukes. Contrary to popular opinion, if these nukes with a second box of brood chip foundation on top are fed with sugar syrup, they will usually draw out the foundation into drawn comb. It's a good way of getting drawn comb built. This is a classic method of making up a nuke from hives in one of your apiaries, and you can be asked to do this in any of the practical assessments. It is therefore important that you learn it and then practice getting it right. It's also good in a practical sense. Find and cage the queen in the original colony. Place her on the top bars or somewhere safe. You then transfer two frames of food and two frames of brood and one empty frame of drone comb into the nucleus hive for the setup we showed you previously. A gentle shake gets rid of all the flying bees. If it's staying in the same apiary, as I said, shake in two or three more frames of young bees. You can then insert a new queen in, a 
quick release cage, close the nuke entrance with sappy grass and locate the nuke away from the main hive in the shade. Leave this alone for at least a week and then check to see if the queen is laying. Don't feed for three days or robbing may start. Don't forget to add frames of foundation to the brood chamber of the parent colony to replace those taken to make up the nuke. And don't forget to release the queen back into the brood chamber of her own colony. If you're moving the nuke to an out apiary, there's no need to shake in more bees. House bees are far more accepting of a new queen than older foragers. To make up a nucleus of young house bees without finding the queen, this is what you do. Three combs, one at least containing plenty of unsealed brood, and the others plenty of honey and pollen, are taken out of the hive and the bees shaken or brushed back in. The combs are placed in a spare brood chamber with the brood in the centre. A queen excluder is put over the stock brood chamber. The new three comb box is placed on top, followed by the crown board, then go and have a cup of tea and a sandwich. In a very short time, about 30 minutes or maybe a bit longer, young bees will come up through the excluder and cover the three combs. It can then be removed, the frames placed into a nuke box and located in your chosen spot. Don't forget to add frames of stores to the nuke if there's not enough. You can later add a ripe queen cell or a virgin or a mated queen. Leave this alone for three weeks and then check for eggs. This is one way of placing a ripe queen cell into a nuke between the top bars. And this is another way. One queen cell pushed into the comb in the area of sealed brood. Some other uses for a nuke. A small swarm is best housed in a nucleus box as it is easier for the bees to keep the cluster warm and so aids drawing foundation. The small swarm will require feeding with sugar syrup in a contact or frame feeder after 48 hours. It's also a good time to start for, to treat for varroa as there will be no brood present. Removing one, two, three or four frames from a colony can delay swarm preparations and this is swarm prevention. I do this in my colonies of the rape and I will add a queen cell, virgin or mated queen from whatever I have available and replace the brood frames in the parent colony with frames of foundation. If you want more information on how to do this, then watch my video in the Swarm and Swarm Control playlist. It is session six entitled Pagden Nucleus and Modified Demarie. When making nukes, you have to consider the time of year. If you make it too early in spring or too late in autumn, it won't have time to build up. Also, if you make up nukes at the end of summer, when there is no nectar flow on, then you will be at risk of robbing from other colonies and or wasps. You need to consider the cost to the parent colony, so only take frames of brood for your nukes from strong colonies. These factors will also influence whether you are going to add a ripe queen cell, a virgin queen or a mated queen. You need to consider that it could take four or five weeks for a freshly emerged virgin to mate and begin laying, and if that's towards the end of the season, will there be sufficient drones for her to mate with? Although Mr. Wedwar stated that nukes really cause problems, there are some pitfalls to consider. There are absolutely no guarantees when introducing queens, and new queens introduced to nukes may be rejected. Ventilation is important in the nuke box, but not a through draft, which is why I like the Corex boxes, which have a large ventilation area. I've already mentioned that you need to keep entrances small to prevent robbing. Also, as with any type of hive in an apiary, with the nukes you need to minimise drifting by facing the entrances in different directions. I have seen created nukes at an association apiary starve, so you need to ensure sufficient stores at all times and I always recommend fondant. Placed on the top bars. This causes less excitement than syrup and is easier to apply. Finally, you need to manage the nuke to build it up for winter and we'll cover that and how to maintain nukes next. The threats to your nukes are heat loss. Make sure you add sufficient bees to cover the brood. Keep the entrance small. Robbing, so again, small round entrances. Starvation, check doors and feed fondant. And congestion can be a problem, so carry out seven day inspections. 
You will be surprised at how the population can expand if the three frames of steel brood emerges. So, you have to manage the expansion and not let the colony get too big for the nuke. Don't forget, this is a temporary hole and they should be moved into a full-sized hive when they've outgrown the nuke. A healthy nuke will generally get through winter, even in the north of Scotland. Polynukes have helped in this respect. Remember to treat for varroa and make sure they have stores to last until the spring nectar flow. And once the spring has sprung, you need to make sure that the nuke can expand either into a second nuke box on top or place the colony into a full-size hive with a dummy board and add frames of foundation as it expands. Nukes build up faster if fed sugar syrup in a contact or frame feeder. Saying that, I always prefer fondant, but if you want to use sugar syrup, it's one kilogram of sugar syrup to one litre of water, which gives a 50% sugar solution. You can add frames of foundation as the colony expands. Reduce the entrance to prevent robbing, especially at the end of the season. Move the dummy board along as they expand, but never give a nucleus more room than they can occupy while they are building up. Combs are added as and when required, moving the divisional dummy board along. Consider chimneying frames, i.e. adding a second box of foundation on top. The outer combs are turned when the bees have drawn their inner face so they draw the other side out. The build-up can be speeded up by adding a comb of emerging brood every few weeks taken from disease-free colonies, but you must be sure to make sure that there are enough bees to cover this extra sealed brood. Inspect your nuke every seven days to check the queen is laying okay, this is sufficient stores and it is disease free, etc. If the colony was set up early in the season, it might build up enough for you to super it later in the summer and you may get some honey from it. I just want to give you some advice on uniting nukes, as you may not have heard of the Z-fold method, where you can unite two or three nukes in one box. This is a simple approach in a single brew chamber using the newspaper method making sure, of course, you only leave one queen. You separate the two or three small nuke colonies vertically and horizontally as shown in the photographs, and it works a treat. That brings us to the end of session three. I have shown you how to make up, maintain and build up your own nukes, and explain the various purposes nukes can be used for. In the next session, I will show you how to create six or more nukes from one strong colony. Great if you are wanting to make increase or sell some nukes. If you are enjoying these videos, you can buy me a beer or make a donation to my PayPal account by following the links in the page banner. Thank you to those who have already bought me a beer. Your donation will help with the running cost. That's all for now. Adios amigos.